All right, Mr. Secretary, thank you so much for joining us here on WTKR uh, here in the Hampton Roads area in Norfolk. Of course, um, so many military members and veterans who might be watching this before we get into specifics about uh, the fourth mission and what the VA is doing right now. What what message do you have for them overall during this uh, unique time in our nation's history? Well, our veterans have been in the toughest spots on the planet. Uh, they know what it's like to go through uh, difficult times. What we've, what we've asked of them is if they don't feel well, if they need us, call us. But that not only means them, it also means their families and caregivers. We're unique in terms of national health systems in that we, we bring in uh, the families. The military is a family. You just don't join. When you join, the entire family joins. And in the last two months, we've sent out over 40 million individual communications to veterans, but we've also sent them out to families and to the caregivers, caregivers like my mother, uh, who took care of my father, who had been terribly wounded in the invasion of Cambodia. So one thing we'll say, if, if you don't feel well, call us. Uh, we'll take care of you. Uh, don't come in. We don't want to endanger you. Uh, we don't want to endanger your fellow veterans or any of our employees. But call us if you don't feel well, and we will take care of you. And part of the VA's response is being prepared for something like this long before it ever becomes yes. a reality. Talk to us a little bit about, about that mission and how you are prepared to face this challenge. Yes, well, we have two missions. The first is obviously veterans. And we began preparing for this in the last week of January. We set up uh, 18 emergency operations centers across the country. Uh, at this time, there have been 5,200 veterans who have tested positive, and, and sadly, 357 of our 9.5 million veterans that we take care of uh, have passed away. But when we have taken care of veterans, we kick in a fourth mission. Uh, we, we support the country. We've opened up our hospitals in Manhattan, in Brooklyn, uh, in New Jersey, Detroit, uh, Louisiana, and in Norfolk at Hampton. Uh, we're taking care of, of nursing home veterans who've come in uh, from other parts of the community. And we are ready uh, to take uh, non-veteran citizens who need our help because that is a mission we we take uh, pride in, in in helping the entire country and specifically you've also activated this uh, this 3d printing network tell us how this works and how it's helping so the the va is really at the center of American medical research. Uh, we have 3D printers across uh, the nation. Uh, they not only work on creating artificial skin, but they're working now to create face shields and masks that our employees can use. And that has been a, a tremendous help uh, as we have, we have met this crisis. And, and, uh, and I think it's also a testament to uh, the foresight of the 400,000 Americans who work for us. Um, are, are you doing anything in, in the realm of, of telehealth, being able to do uh, virtual doctor visits, things like that? Sure. Uh, on, a, on a normal month, Blaine, we, we take in 40,000 mental health teleappointments. In the month of March, we did 154,000. Uh, to me, this is, the, this is the way of the future, where we can reach people in rural America, in tribal America, through the telephone, through the computer, not forcing them or their families to travel into a large clinical setting. So we have now stressed the system, and it proves that we can do it. But overall, in terms of telehealth, in a normal month, we have about a million telehealth appointments. That's, that's mental health and other things. Uh, in the month of March, we had two million. So we have certainly expanded that service, and our veterans have responded with, with overwhelming satisfaction. And the, the overall overarching message is if you are sick, if you need help, you're just a phone call away. We are just a phone call away. And I will say as someone who, who went to school in the Ghent neighborhood there in Norfolk and spent most of my naval life in Norfolk, uh, there's no place in the country like Norfolk. Uh, you don't have to explain military service to anyone. Uh, we're proud of our veterans there, and we want them to know they can call us when they need us, and we will be there. Secretary, thank you so much for joining us uh, here on WTKR, and we wish you all the best. Thank you, Blaine.